just for a moment, imagine a sphere. What is it that you see? I mean, my guess is a perfectly smooth, rounded object that kind of looks like a pool or a snooker ball. I mean, maybe you don't see anything at all, because, after all, you, you know what a sphere looks like. And you don't need your mind's eye to remind you of that. What I want to do today is challenge your view on spheres. I would expect that your understanding, while it's not wrong, it is very limited. Why do we associate spheres with a typical ball shape? The main reason is because in language terms, that's exactly what it refers to. If you asked for a perfect sphere from your local sphere monger, and they gave you anything other than a globe-like ball, you'd want your money back. But in purely mathematical terms, a sphere is so much more. I mean, don't click away. I know the M word isn't very popular these days, and understandably so. I promise you that I'm not going to test you on this and make you stand in front of the whole class and ask about your knowledge on spheres. So, first, let's look at what your current knowledge is, and then we'll try and build up from there. And then we'll see what it really means, mathematically, to be a sphere. Typically, we think of a 3D ball, right? And this ball has to be smooth, so no bumps. But it also can't be stretched in any direction. It has to be uniform. If it was stretched, you'd think of that being more of an oval. The distance from any point on one side of the sphere to the other that's passing through the centre should always be the same. Now this, for those of you who are getting ahead of me, will know this to be the diameter. Using this, we can actually define a sphere, but we are going to use the radius instead. If we take some point, and we're just going to call that the centre point, we want the radius of, say, one centimetre, we can just look at all the points that are one centimetre away from this centre point. So that's a sphere. As it happens, this isn't just a 3D thing. It also defines a sphere in any number of dimensions. Let's look at, for example, in 2D. This idea would make a circle. Mathematically, we would also refer to this as a sphere, but it's just a sphere within two-dimensional space. In a weird way, we can also have a sphere in one dimension, which has to just be two points on the diameter. This is as low as spheres can get, though. Understanding why a sphere in one dimension is just these two points is actually simpler than you would think. Take a three-dimensional sphere and just slice it through the centre. If you look at that from the top, this cross-section is a circle, a sphere in two dimensions. You could do the same with the circle and slice that through the centre, and then if you look at the cross-section, you've got two points, a one-dimensional sphere. With any sphere that's in two dimensions or above, if you slice it through the centre, you're going to get a sphere in the dimension below that. A small bit of information that we're going to need before we go any further is the name for these spheres. In maths, we actually refer to the spheres based on the surface, not the dimension that it's in. So we're actually going based on what the sphere looks like. So let's look at a circle. To form a circle's surface, you actually just take a line, which is a one-dimensional thing, and you wrap it round itself and then join the two ends. Because a circle is made of a one-dimensional thing, we call it a one-sphere, not a two-sphere. Similarly with a zero-sphere, this is two points. These are zero-dimensional points. And if you look at the surface of a two-sphere, you're also seeing something that's 2D. Things get difficult to visualise past two spheres. But using our logic that we've already set up, hopefully you can see that spheres in higher dimensions do exist. For a three-sphere, for example, which is a sphere within four-dimensional space, we can try and imagine it without visualising it. We have to try and imagine it mathematically. In three dimensions, we can define a point with three numbers, where that point is in the first dimension, where that point is in the second dimension, and then where it is in the third. And from that point, we have this number, which we call its coordinate. For two points in 3D space, we also know the distance between them. We won't go into detail of how we find that distance, but you've just got to trust us that we do know this distance, and we can work with it. In maths, the shorthand for the distance between two points, say capital X and capital Y, is dxy. 
To form a sphere, we simply take the center point, which we're going to call big zero, and we say that any point capital Y on the sphere must satisfy D zero Y is equal to R. And in this case, R is what we call in the radius. Now, let's knock this into the next gear. We're going into the fourth dimension. Now, the center is, is pretty much the same thing. It's still big zero. We just have an extra zero in its coordinate. And while we can't visualize this, we now have a mathematical way of finding all the points of a certain distance away. And that's represented like this. And now we're also going to make the radius one, just for the case of simplicity. If we remember from earlier, the distance from a point to the center point is this little equation. And all we need to do is add the extra coordinate on it and then set it equal to one. And now we've got it in four dimensions. And now this equation is literally a three sphere. Now we know this, we can apply this to other dimensions. And all we need to do to get a sphere in a certain dimension is just have that many coordinates, set the distance equal to one, and then plug it into our distance formula. And then we've got a sphere. Admittedly, I know that this is a little bit unsatisfying, but that's all a sphere is. A three sphere takes a 3D area and then just curves it around in 4D space. Unfortunately, I can't draw this, but it is much the same as with a two sphere. You just add in a pesky little extra dimension before you curve it round. This is the same with all of these higher dimensional spheres. An n sphere is just an n dimensional area that's curved round itself in n plus one dimensional space. Hopefully you can see from this that you don't actually need to be able to see this to understand it. Because truthfully, I can't visualize these spheres and my head really hurts when I try. But seeing is not always believing. I hope you like this bit of content. I know it's different to the stuff that I've put out before. Let me know if there's another mathematical concept that you've always wanted to understand that maybe you think I could explain. So if you like that, drop it a like. Maybe chuck a cheeky little comment in there. Or maybe a subscribe if you're feeling that way inclined. But until next time, I'll see you later.